the call to worship and obedience, yeah. Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is he for he is for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come and let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of the trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they saw my works. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation and said it is a people who will go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Yeah. Amen. February, I think that would be February, um, what would that, 
7th, we will start our conference call Bible study back up. <clears throat> and I ask that you all uh, be, in, be, be in prayer for the Bible study because I want to come back in person. Uh, we're praying for God to uh, move and direct us. Uh, I think it's important that we be here in person. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the conference call because that's what we had to do for the last two going on three years. But something about being in the presence of the saints, something about the saints being together, able to pull the pages back and rightly divide the word of truth together. And uh, I want to I want to come back and I want to build it strong. I want to teach the saints how to navigate through the scriptures. Uh, there's so many places, people that um, they have. Uh, nothing wrong with pastoral teaching, but I think you can teach and preach at the same time. But we need to have some dialogue. We, we need to have classes on understanding why certain passages was written. Uh, we have so many ministries now, and I know Facebook and YouTube, you're looking at us. We're glad that you're viewing us today. Uh, this might offend some. It might be a blessing to others. But the reason why so many people are lost in the church is because they've never been taught how to search the scriptures on them on their own. We're living in a time now where the spirit of manipulation has took over the pulpit and people have a strategy. Preachers have a strategy. These were the small uh, antichrists that Peter talked about as well as 1 John, a gospel, uh, 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 Apostle John in 1 John chapter 2. Uh, verse 18, he says, uh, you little children, he said, you have heard, I'm not preaching, but I'm just, I'm going somewhere. He said, little children, you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. He said, but there are many Antichrists uh, that are already existing in the church. And he was not referring to those uh, that had other faiths uh, like uh, Mormons and uh, Catholicism. He was talking about these little small uh, antichrists that have came into the church and as Apostle Paul said have twisted the scriptures. They have twisted the scriptures out of its original meaning, out of the pureness of it. And it's got people deceived in believing something about themselves and the connection that they claim that they have with God to be a lie. And so I want to come back in and do Bible study so that we can rightly divide this thing. There is some damnable doctrine that has been spread over a course of time that has affected the mindset of the church to the degree that they can't even really recognize that God is closer now than he's ever been in the history of the world to return back. And I'm afraid some is shouting and they're shouting on the broad way. And they ain't praising God on the narrow way. Uh, because if they praise God on the narrow way, they wouldn't be stumbling over stuff that they should have got delivered from. I need to talk back to the church or somebody that's uh, praying with me. Uh, but I, I'm not going to go down that avenue because I got another avenue I got to go down this afternoon. Uh, so we want to keep that in mind. Also, the third Sunday night in February, which is February the 19th, um, the New Horizon District. This is a very busy year for North Carolina 3rd. Ecclesiastical jurisdiction of Church of God in Christ. Uh, this is the year, this part of the year is when all our districts, I think we have 12 districts, 12 superintendents, I can't name all of them, but all of them have a district meeting that they are responsible for. And so uh, we are under uh, Superintendent William H. Cooper, and our headquarters for the New Horizon District is in Burlington, North Carolina, and he is having a district tour where he is uh, uh, blessing the pastors and other things in ministry as we get ready to go into our district meeting that will take place in March. I'm praying and hoping between now and the first Sunday that I will at least have the calendar ready to present to all of you so that you can keep track of what's going on with our uh, district as well as with um, our workers meeting that will be coming up in April as well as our holy convocation as well as our state women's convention under our jurisdictional uh, missionary Dijonet, if I pronounce her name correctly. And so we would have all that. But on that third Sunday night, uh, they were doing do the first uh, the first part of the district tour will be held here at Berean Holy Temple. We will be hosted it. And uh, I've been asked that night to ask that night to minister. And so 
I pray and hope that y'all will hang out with me for a little while that day. Uh, we will have a two o'clock service, praise the Lord. And we will have Elder uh, Josiah Evans, who is one of the elders uh, at the Upper Room Church. You don't want to miss him. He is a teacher. If you was here that night um, in the consecration union, he was the young man with the nice big afro that was sitting on this side of the room. And uh, he had, a, I call a radio voice, and uh, he was really navigating through the scriptures. And, uh, but the Lord has called this man into ministry and he has agreed to come and minister to us that day to give yours truly a break Amen. so I can be ready that night. Amen. And so uh, we promise not to keep you but an hour. Uh, praise the Lord. And I want you to go get something to eat. And don't eat too heavy and fall asleep because I need you to be just as fired up and lively as you can on that service that night. Uh, we we going to have some church that night. I, I'm already working on something that the Lord has given me. And uh, I'm excited about giving it to you. Uh, but I want to make sure that I follow exactly what the Lord has given me so that the people can be blessed by the word. So I want you to keep those uh, announcements in mind. Uh, come on and clap your hands for Sister Robin and for uh, Miss Al uh, Madison for making it back from Florida last week. And... Um, Madison turned 16 years old, and uh, she's the youngest one in the church right now, praise the Lord. And, and uh, it's been a hard thing to swallow for her daddy. <laughs> but I'm all right. I'm going to be all right, praise the Lord. So we're so glad that the Lord blessed them, and Sister Robin was able to bless the saints. Uh, I don't know the name of the church, but my brother-in-law pastors the church down in Ocala, and uh, she was able to go down and bless them with uh, ministering of song. Uh, what's the name? Faith Baptist. Okay. I hope it was no other names because I'll forget those as quick as you call them. Out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyway, we thank God that the Lord gave them uh, airway mercy to, to come back. The flight didn't get delayed and they didn't have no problems. And they came back home. And we were so glad to see them. Uh, all three of us was. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But nevertheless, we thank God for you all. And um, uh, let's get ready to go into the word. And but before I do, uh, brothers, just help me sing a little bit of my testimony. And uh, since your boys is here and since the music is hot, let's go ahead and let's open the doors a little bit more. Some way, somehow. You know I've got to make this journey somehow. This is my testimony. Oh, Satan is on my track. Said he's trying to turn me back. Got to make this journey somehow. Turn 
you know you gotta make it? Come on and give them a break. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be having to stand before the saints once again. Now, Lord, I ask that you bless me that when I begin to expound on your word, that your anointing would touch the hearts of the people. Bless me also, Lord, that I do no damage to your word, but preach that which is sound doctrine and holiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and clap those hands once again and let's give God praise. As we forestated earlier, we thank God for Facebook and YouTube today. And uh, we pray and hope that if you like what you hear, give us some thumbs up or some hearts. Praise the Lord. Give us some comments and uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not here to preach anything to, to get your opinion, but if it's something that's said that can bless your heart, it would be very encouraging to me. Amen. Let's turn to Psalms 139. 139. Psalms 139. <clears throat> for you that are with us, for the first time this year, we thank God for Brother Bruce and Sister Amy being with us today. Amen. And congratulations on the grandbaby. Uh, and thank God that the Lord blessed the baby to get here safe, sound, and healthy. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, one day I'm going to have some. But right now we just enjoying what is going on right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope I don't be too old, but if I do, it'll be all right. Amen. Psalms 139, and I want to read two verses, and then I'm going to elaborate on the verses leading up to it. And I need for you to pray with me, and I think I could be finished in a timely manner. <clears throat> Psalms 139, verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Verse 24 says, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Is that what your Bible says? Amen. I want to talk from this subject, search me, O oh God. I think we all need, as we uh, move into this year of self-examination, our theme for 2023 is examine yourself coming from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 verse 5. And as we are examining ourselves, if we are not honest with ourselves in this examination, uh, you might need to turn in the direction of asking God to search you. Here in this prayer, David invites God to test his thoughts. David's focus here is directly on what is within him, not what's within his neighbor or his family or friend, but what is within him. He wants God to look inside of him, his inner person, so that he is assured that God knows what is in his heart. According to Psalms 26, verse 2, David said, test me, Lord, try me. Examine my heart, listen, and my mind. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart, the inward part, the mind, the soul, the seat of the desires of my affections. He said, Lord, I need for you to do this for me. His concern was uh, in this prayer that he wanted God uh, to look for any offensive way of behavior. That offensive way phrase means uh, an act or series of acts which lead one or another into sin. Another definition is a way that is likely to upset, irritate, or humiliate someone. David's point was for God to look for anything in him that will cause pain toward God. How many know, if you don't know, you can cause God some pain? Yes, David's cry was, God, show me an offensive way so that it can be dealt with. As Christians, my brothers and sisters, we should be requesting the same thing. David was asking God, uh, he was asking of God uh, these sinful thoughts. He said, Lord, I need you to look at my sinful thoughts. We talked about that a few Sundays ago. Bad intentions, my brokenness, 
failureness, being failure, being a failure that would cause you pain. He says, uh, look at how I'm hurting others. Oh my, David wanted to know, God, have I been hurting others outside of you? David here was willing to pray this prayer, and in willing to pray this prayer, he recognized that he needed to humble himself to invite God in. My brothers and sisters, uh, as we move forward into this year, asking God to search us, uh, we need to be willing to pray this prayer. We need to be willing to say, Lord, uh, I humble myself by inviting you in uh, to spot check my life. Uh, some people would never be able to experience this because the pride that they have in their spirit and how they try to hide their failures and their sins uh, would cause them to not respond uh, to this type of prayer. They'd rather uh, be living in denial uh, than instead of owning up to the issues that they have with inside of them. Most of them would not own up to the things that they have done. They would not admit to God the things that they have done. Uh, therefore, they will always be in a defense mode, uh, refusing to deal with the situations uh, that they refuse to admit concerning their issues and their faults. However, here, David here in this psalm start this prayer off by acknowledging God's omniscience. 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 I've been practicing that word all morning. <laughs> I felt like I was eventually messing it up because my tongue get tired. But thank God we got some people in the chat and Facebook that can understand omniscience. Yeah. I got an omnipresent uh, and omnipotence. I think I got them two right, praise the Lord. Omniscience, uh, uh, omniscient, I got to take my time, means God knows all things. Past, present, and future. He knows whatever, he knows whatever is possible to know by knowing man's thoughts, words, and ways. I'm going to show you that in verse 1 through 6. Omnipresent, God is present everywhere. He is present in all his creation. There is nothing in the universe that he is not there. Uh, his presence is felt in heaven at the hour of death, in the most remote places, and in the darkest areas uh, of this earth, uh, God's presence is there. An omnipotence. God is all-powerful and mighty. He can do whatever he desires to do. Uh, he even done, he even showed how powerful he was when he formed the delicate, com complex human body in the womb of the mother. In other words, uh, look at how God made us, all of us in here, we made some of us as brothers and sisters uh, uh, by blood, and we all come out of the same womb of our mother, but he created us a little different than he did our brothers uh, and uh, our sisters. God's omniscience, he says here in uh, verse 1 through verse 6, and I'm going to try to slide through these, he says here, God, I recognize that you know all things. He says in verse 1, he says, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. In other words, he said, Lord, you searched me thoroughly. You searched me and you know everything about me. That word search means to examine. They examine with pain. The, the Jewish people at that time uh, described this word as digging deep into a pit. Oh um, my, exploring the land, investigating as a legal case. Oh my, uh, has anybody ever seen a pit dug? Uh, Brother Bruce, I think you've probably seen one at the rock quarry. They had to go deep down in the ground to get the rock. They can go so deep to where that it takes a little while to come up out of it uh, the way that it was dug in. He says here, yeah, God, search me out that way. Dig deep into my heart. And look and find what needs to be found. He says here, God, I, I, he says in this prayer, he reminds God, he said, God, I know that you are everywhere. He says, you know my down sitting, you know my uprising, and you understand my thoughts of how. He said, you know when I sit down and you know when I rise up. He said, God, you know my entire life and everything about me. He said, you understand how crazy my thoughts are. 
He says here, uh, uh, you know everything about me. Saints, he knows our actions. He knows our locations. He knows our inward thoughts. No one needs to think that God don't know them. Uh, he can't help but to know you because he made you. Oh, can somebody tell God, thank you. Thou compassest my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with my ways. He says, you have inspected and examined my path. You have examined my laying down. You have immediately acquainted my failures and is aware of all my ways. He says him, even before, he says, you knew the words that was on my tongue. He said, God, you knew what I was going to say in my mouth before I opened it. He knows exactly what we're going to say before we open our mouth. He knows what thoughts is going to come to our mind before we recognize the thoughts. Why? Because he's sovereign. And he's the beginning and the end. He goes on to say here, you have enclosed. Verse 5 said, thou has beset me behind and before and have laid thy hand upon me. You have enclosed. You have surrounded. You have sealed off me behind and before. You have gone before me and followed me. You have placed your hand of blessings on my head. Oh, David recognized saints. Uh, he recognized how God surrounded him. He recognized how God sealed him off from his enemies. Uh, he says, God, you went out before me as well as you are following me. Oh, what do you see? How do you see this? That means I'm in the middle. That means he's all around me. That means he went out before and he's following me. Oh, he's got me covered. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Verse 6, it is high. I cannot obtain unto it. He says, such unlimited knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high above me and I cannot reach it. Oh, he bragged about how a wonderful God's knowledge is and how it is more greater than he can ever understand. Mm -hmm. And then after he described this to God in his prayer, he said, God, you are omnipresent. He said, God is present. God, I'm aware that you are everywhere. In other words, I'm aware of that you know when I go out as when I come in. He said, whether shall I go with thy spirit Verse 7, whether shall I flee from thy presence? Where can I go from your spirit, God? Or where can I flee from your presence? He said, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence, God. Saints, we can never be able to get away from God. He will always see us when no one else sees us. He will always know where we're located at when no one else knows we are located. He says, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. In other words, he says, if I go to heaven, you'll be there. If I go down in the grave, I, you'll be there. Wherever I'm at, he said, God, you'll be there. He said in verse 9, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, if I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the furthest part of the sea, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the furthest part, he said, you will be there. He said in verse 10, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Even there your hand will lead me, God. Your right hand will take hold of me. In other words, you will guide me and you will strengthen me with support. Verse 11 says, uh, if I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. He says, surely the darkness will cover me and the night will be the only light around me. He says, uh, I couldn't ask in the darkness to hide. In other words, he says, I can't hide in the dark, God, because the same way that you see me in the light, you see me the same way in the dark. Other words, brothers and sisters, uh, we might can hide from one another in the dark because we can see each other with the lights on, uh, but we think we can hide from each other in the dark. Uh, we deceive ourselves because it doesn't matter what we see, it's about what God sees. See, we do things at nighttime uh, thinking that no one will see us creep around at night. But we deceive ourselves uh, because the way that we see each other, not seeing ourselves creep around at night, we don't remember that God sees us at night. 
I believe God sleeps better at night than he do in the daytime. Because of the simple fact that he has that kind of vision that he can, he got those night goggles that the military soldiers use uh, when they're fighting in the war. They see better just as good at night than they do in the daytime. Oh my, he says in verse 13, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. In other words, I just, just my mama said, I explained it. The darkness and light is the same in God's eyesight. So therefore, he said, Lord, I recognize this. I, I recognize uh, that you are omnipresent. Uh, he says, uh, but I also recognize that, that you are omnipotent. Meaning that, that you are very, very powerful and you can do whatever you desire you because you are God. He says, for thou hast uh, possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He says, God, he said, you formed me in the innermost parts. Oh, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. He says, you delicately put me together. That means you put my lungs together. You put my liver together. You put my kidneys together. In other words, no one on the outside was able to see what you were doing to me on the inside. You knitted it together. You made it perfect. So when I came out of my mother's womb, uh, no one could detect if I had a default and then because they couldn't see it. He says, because uh, you knitted me together. Therefore, he said, I will praise thee. For I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. He says, I will give thanks and praises to you, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My brothers and sisters, let me show you something here. Anytime a man or a woman has got to get uh, certain body parts done all over again by man, uh, that tells me that it wasn't satisfied with how God wonderfully made them. Uh-huh. They want to add certain things to certain areas of their body to try to look like a certain person or a certain way, but is not pleased or satisfied with how the handiwork and the craftsmanship of God's hand made me. That's the reason why I come. I will never put a toupee on because I'm satisfied with being bald in the top. That's the reason why I will never put color in my hair because I'm satisfied with the wisdom that God showed on the side of my head to show people and what I've been through with and what I'm still going through with and what I have learned because I'm satisfied in my soul and how he made me oh is anybody <laughs> praying with me here he goes on to say here he says my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously routed in the lowest parts of the earth, he says, my frame was not hidden from you. He said, when I was being formed in secret, uh, oh, in my mother's womb, uh, straightforwardly and skillfully formed uh, as if overstated with many colors uh, in the depths of the earth. You watched me, God. You watched your handiwork. You watched how I was framed. He said in verse 16, Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members was written, which in countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were all written the days uh, that I were appointed to be here. Other words, it's in the book, saints. It was in the book when we we're going to be born. And it's in the book when we're going to die. And man might try to predict one way or the other, but he cannot out-predict God. I remind myself so much that when my children were born, uh, they gave us a due date. And how many mothers know that due dates never come on time? Uh-huh. It might be before, might be weeks after, but it never comes. So they have to say it'll be somewhere around these dates. And sometimes it's not around that date. In other words, God got it on paper. He got it on his paper. He got it in his books when we come in and as well as when we go out. He got, he got it in his books of how we will be shaped. Oh, somebody tell God thank you. However, 
Verse 17, he says, How precious also, also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. In other words, he says, How precious also are your thoughts to me, God. Oh, uh, oh God, how vast is the sum of them. He says, how precious the, your thoughts to me. They are wonderful. He goes on to say here, your thoughts are so wonderful that they cannot be numbered. In other words, uh, you can't number it. You can't figure it out. His blessings, uh, his, his thoughts towards me. Oh my, they're beyond what I can ever imagine. He says, if I could count them, they are more in number than I was in the sand. Other words, uh, the grain of sand, uh, the number is more than the grain of sand. And if you look at sand on a beach, uh, you cannot take each grain and be able to count it. There will be numbers that that sand will go to that you can't be able to pronounce. Uh, oh my, he says here, yeah, but because I know you, he says, I'm aware that this can I cannot come up with this. He said, it will just mess my mind up. So while he sits here, and while he is sitting here, acknowledging God's uh, omnipresence, uh, David now acknowledges uh, that uh, I got a request, God. He says, I acknowledge that you are all things. He said, I acknowledge the fact that you know all things past, present, and future. I'm aware that you know where I'm at at the moment. I'm aware of your powerful hand. He said, but Lord, I got two requests here. Well, he says, our, my first request here is according to verse 19, verse 22. He requested God to destroy the wicked. David had a problem with wicked people. He had a problem with how the people treated him. He had a problem with how they viewed and treated God. He said, oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get them out of my life. These murderers. He said, they blaspheme you, God. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh Lord, should I hate those who hate you? He asked God a question. Should I despise those who opposes you? Yes, I hate them with a total hatred for your enemies and my enemies. In other words, when David said this to God, something pricked his conscience. He began to say, Lord, I realize that this might not be the feeling that you needed me to have towards my enemies. He said, therefore, God, he says, I need for you to help me. Therefore, I'm opening myself up to you because I need for you to totally search me. So when we look here in verse 23, we see why David is asking. He said, Lord, he said, search me thoroughly. Oh God, search me thoroughly. He says, uh, search my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts, my anxiety in my thoughts. Uh, he said, God, I need for you to look at me. God, I need for you to look in my heart. I need for you to search in my mind. David invited the Lord to go beyond words and deeds. He invited God to dig deep into his conscience. He invited God to dig deep into his heart. He wanted God uh, to search his heart out. Uh, he wanted God to search his feelings, uh, his intentions, uh, and his motives. Uh, oh my. He said, try me, Lord. And that word try, he, uh, he was expressing, he says, I want you to refine me. I want you to purify me, God. Uh, he says, uh, I desire, God, that you thoroughly examine me and prove me to be a pure man within. My brothers and sisters, uh, this is the thought process that we have to have. Uh, we really need God to try us. We really need God uh, to go down uh, into uh, the core of our hearts uh, to find out if we are pure with him. He even says, God, uh, not just try me, uh, but I need for you to try my thoughts. 
He says, I need for you to look at how my thoughts function, uh, my intense feelings towards the wicked. In other words, he had a feeling towards the wicked saints uh, that he knew that God wasn't pleased with. Uh, he knew that God wanted us to love our enemy. He knew that God wanted us to treat our enemy right, even if our enemy treated us wrong. But David got in the flesh a little bit uh, because he knew how he felt about God. But he was bothered because nobody felt like he felt. That should be a problem with us to a certain extent. It bothers me that no one see the need of running to the Lord like I do. It bothers me that no one see the need to love him like I do. Oh, they play games with him. They use him as a frisbee or they use him as play on words. God is real whether you believe it or not. Oh, how do I know he's real? Because I got up this morning. I was able to move the activities of my limbs. Oh, how do I know he's real? I was able to pick my feet up although I had pain in my right foot uh, that I've been dealing with for the last few days, I was still able to move around. Uh, oh God, uh, the reason why I know he's real uh, is because I looked outside and I saw the rain. Uh, oh, how do I know he's real? Uh, when I turned the fireplace on this morning, I was able to feel the fire. Oh, somebody tell God, thank you. And so David says here, he says here, God, I, 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 I need for you to do this. He says uh, in verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. He says here, God, he says, I need for you to see if there's any wicked way. A hurtful way in me. In other words, God, I need for you to show me and point it out. You say, God, I need for you to let me know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. God, I need for you to expose the sin that's in my life. Saints, I'm trying to get you to see it. if you're going to ask God to search you. You better be ready for what he's going to show you. You better act like you want to know it. And you better have some intentions of getting it right. Sometimes we want to be a smart mouth person. And say, God, well, show me what's wrong with me. And when God show you that you are still hateful. When God show you that you still got a lust demon in you. When God show you that you're still a fornicator and an adulterer. When God show you you still got in Envy in your heart. You still got jealousy in your heart. The question is, when he show you what you're going to do, it's not about what I say. It's not about what your mom and daddy say. It's not about what your spouse have to say. But it's about what God is showing you about you. Every one of us in the morning get up and go to the mirror. And none of us sit there and glimpse in the mirror because we gaze to see what we look like. We find out we still got sleep in our eyes. We found out we still got slop around our mouth. We find out that our face is a little bruised by the pillar. We find out that our eyes are bloodshot red. Sometimes we find out that our lips swole up. Sometimes we find out that a pimple came out uh, because we sit there in the mirror and gazed uh, to see what was going on in our bodies. Uh, and then sometimes we look at the long mirror uh, to see whether or not we lost any weight or gain. Uh, sometimes we put on outfits. Uh, we want to make sure they fit right. Uh, if they too tight, we loosen them up. If they're too loose, we get out of it. Uh, oh, somebody help me here. We look and gaze in the mirror. And the mirror don't lie. The mirror show you what you're all about. My brothers and sisters, as I get ready to leave, I want you to see that when you ask God to search you out, he's going to pull up a mirror that's called the world. God. And when he pull up that mirror, if you got good intentions to get right with him, he will show you where you are placed at with him. And I encourage every one of us in here, as God begin to show us, begin to expose the wickedness in our life, I would advise you to get in a hurry 
and tell God I'm ready to change. Uh -huh. See, some of us can talk a good thing, uh -huh. but until you get tired of yourself, uh -huh. until you get tired of the way you think, uh -huh. you ain't going to make no intentional effort to change. Uh -huh. I'm so glad uh -huh, that I got tired of myself. Uh -huh. Some people say I didn't get tired uh -huh, of living up on sin. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, I got tired. Uh -huh. What caused me to be tired? I go to church on Sundays uh -huh, and I hear about hell and heaven. Uh -huh. I go to church on Sunday uh -huh, knowing I had lust in my heart. Knowing I had greed in my heart. Uh -huh. And when the word of God come right uh -huh, across the pulpit, uh -huh, the spirit of condemnation uh -huh, will fall on your heart. Uh -huh. Some people come to the altar uh -huh, because they can't live with that pressure. Uh -huh. Some people walk away and act like they're not talking about them. Uh -huh. But one thing I know about the word, uh -huh. one thing I know about the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. when the Holy Spirit Spirit begin to prick your conscience. Uh -huh. You can't sleep at night. Uh -huh. You can be in the night. Uh -huh. All the lights cut off in the room. You can't sleep. Uh -huh. You can take all the sleeping pills. Uh -huh. You can take all the Advil uh -huh. that you need to help you to go to sleep. Uh -huh. But the one thing uh -huh, that cannot fall asleep uh -huh, is your conscience. Uh -huh. So say yes. Uh -huh. The only way that your conscience uh -huh, does not work uh -huh, except you ignore know uh -huh, what God got in your mind. Uh -huh. See, the Holy Spirit, uh -huh, it knows how to show you your down sitting uh -huh, and your uprising. Uh -huh. It knows you inside out. Uh -huh. You can't run from God. Uh -huh. You can't escape from God. Uh -huh. You might not want to be around me uh -huh, because the light that's in me exposed the darkness in you. Uh -huh. But one thing I know, uh -huh, you can't outrun Jesus. Uh -huh. You can't outrun my Father. Uh -huh. He's in the spirit realm. Uh -huh. God uh -huh. Is the only man uh, that can be here in California, uh, in Russia, uh, in Ukraine, uh, all at the same time. Uh, and if he can be uh, in all those places uh, at the same time, uh, he knows uh, who you are. Uh, so say yes. Uh, let's go, church. Uh, yes. Yes, Lord. Uh, I'm so glad uh, he turned uh, on the searchlight. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he turned it on uh, because I wanted him to do it. Uh, he turned it on because I needed him to do it. Uh, I got tired of living wicked. Uh, I got tired of chasing women. Uh, but the Lord, uh, he had uh, And when I cried, uh, he come to my rescue. When I cried, uh, he heard my voice. Uh, I was in a pit in the market Marty Clay. Uh, he picked me up uh, after I cried. Uh, turned me around after I cried. Uh, placed my feet on a solid word. Uh, some say a solid ground. Uh, the word is a solid ground and when he placed me I didn't sink in the sand because my house was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus' name on Christ the solid rock I stand on uh, every ground is seeking sand uh, and because uh, he heard yes uh, he heard my cry because I asked him turn on the searchlight and when he turned it on he found me guilty of all the sins uh, but when I came uh, yes uh, when I came uh, to the mourner's bench. 
I repented, yes I did. I cried, I said, Lord, you've been good to the boy. When I was running around, you could have killed me. When I was lying, you could have killed me. When I was fornicating, you could have killed me. Yes, but your mercy and your grace saved me. Yes, it saved me. Gave me time. Come to myself. So, Brother Bruce, I came boldly. Yes, I did. And when I got up, I was free in my spirit. I felt like I could walk on a cloud. My head looked new. My feet looked new. My speech was new. I had a countenance that no one ever saw. I had the glory of God shining upon me. Every dark room that I walked in, they recognized that a man of God was in the building. Let me tell you, saints, when the glory shines from your life, I don't care where you're at, let your light so shine. I don't care if you're on the job. I don't care if you're in a family reunion. I don't care if you're in the hospital. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That's the reason I'm so glad I can go to the county jail and be a light behind the prison doors. I'm so glad that when a murderer asks this light to pray for his soul, yes, yes, I got something to pray for. When somebody asks you to pray for him, don't be ashamed, don't criticize him, but pray for him because they see a light that's shining out of your soul. I'm about to have a preaching fit, but when that light lead the sinner man, that light will lead the prostitute, that light will lead the homeowner to Jesus. If I be lifted up from the earth, I draw. How many know he draws? How many know he'll draw you? How many know he'll draw you? Did he draw you? Did he draw you? Did he draw you? Come on and celebrate. Come on and give a praise. I got the ghost face. Come on, come on, come on. Thank God. Thank God. I feel him in the room. Somebody need a breakthrough. Somebody need a right now breakthrough. God, we got the lights on. He got the searchlight on. He's waiting on you to call on his name. He's waiting on you to cry in repentance. And if you cry, he's going to pick you up. He's going to dust you off. He's going to clean you up and prepare you to go back with him. How many want to go back if you know you want to go back? I dare you to praise him now. If you really want to go back, I ask you to give him some glory. If you really want to go back, I ask you to give him the worship. He's been good. Yes. Oh, yes. Come on, saints and blessings. Oh, 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 oh. 
children. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify your name. Oh God, that there's someone in here that needs a searchlight. God, you just told us, like you told me, just ask, and it shall be done. If you know you need God to search it out, be ready to accept what he showed you. And if he pointed out to you that you need to come back, you need to renew your vows with him. You need to come back and commit your life to him. You need him to save you. You need him to sanctify you. If you just ask him, he will do it. God, work on the hearts of the people. Let the anointing stay in their minds. Lord, let the anointing stay on their conscience. Let them see themselves. That they will do the necessary things to get right with you, God. And Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. I gotta let this go. God, we're gonna give you glory. Blessing over the offering, and I'm going to play the 
benediction and we're going to go home. He's been so good. He's been so good. Oh, and we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. I'm feeling it. You've been so merciful. How many can say God's been merciful to you? He's been so kind. And we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Oh, you made a way out of the offerings that we're about to receive. God, I ask that you bless them as you see fit. Bless them a hundredfold. Lord, bless those that are giving through tithe and free will offering. Those that are giving above and beyond. God, we want to thank you for those that are not members or in the fellowship of our church but still send contributions through the way of mail, through the mail, through the way of cash app. God, we want to thank you that you have helped us to sustain in a troubling time and God we just owe you the praise and we owe you the glory now Lord as we prepare to leave this place to go out and serve Lord let us not forget that all we got to do is just ask you because you said that you will search us out but you only search us out based upon what our cry is God none of us wants to die and go to hell and so Lord we all are asking I'm asking on behalf of the saints. I'm asking on behalf of myself that you continue to turn on the searchlight. And God, please hear our cry when we come to you. Because we will do that. And God will give you glory on that praise. God bless the musicians as they travel in the rain to go back home. Father, they come so far. God, give them the road mercy that they need. God, give them the road mercy that he give all of us the road mercy that we need that we don't have to deal with road rage we don't have to deal with drunk drivers we don't have to deal with no one that's on drugs but God that you would keep them bay and bless us that we may bypass them to get home safely to our destination and God we give you the glory and we give you the honor and we give you the praise uplift your hands now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about us now and forever. Let us all say together, God, first, you're dismissed. Brother Tyler's coming to pick the offering up. God bless you. We'll see you next time.